welcome back to the Kinetic F104GA building 48 scale. At the end of the last uh, video, we'd got the fuselage together and just off camera, I applied some diluted Mr. Surface of 500 to some of the small gaps and cracks in the belly plates. And for the first section of this video, we're just going to clean that off. And before we look at joining some of the other items to the airframe. So I diluted this Mr. Surfacer down with some uh, cellulose thinners just to make it really thin and a bit watery. But the uh, technique I use for removing this means that there's no sanding required. So just using some IPA into a small dish. Yes, I don't want to get too much. We're going to use a cotton bud. And we're just going to remove the Mr. Surfacer from the uh, the area in question. And we're going to go across the defect, not along it. Otherwise, we'll just remove it. Now, it takes a, a second or two for the IPA to start biting into the Mr. Surfacer. But once it does, it'll start coming off quite easily. There we go. And the benefit of this is it doesn't destroy any plastic or surrounding detail with sanding. And it just leaves that minute amount in the defect. Making it virtually indistinguishable from the rear panel lines surrounding it. There we go. So again we're just going to work across the seam line once that IPA starts biting it'll just start coming off the good thing with the IPA as well uh, doesn't attack the plastic some people uh, use cellulose thinners, lacquer thinners, to do the same job. But the problem with that is it starts attacking the plastic. There we go. So just working around each of the areas in turn. Getting that IPA into the uh, Mr. Surfacer just to start it dissolving again. There we go. Once it starts going, it does go pretty quick. Any bigger areas would need um, a little bit more substantial treatment than this, but these are just gaps in the inter, you know, inter joining panels, um, where where left untreated, it would just look a little bit more pronounced than the uh, surrounding panel line. So moving a bit along, we've got another area just here. Doesn't take very long at all. Certainly a lot quicker than it would be sanding and then having to rescribe lost detail and putting new rivets in and things like that. Don't be scared of getting it wet. You know, the, sometimes it's uh, a little bit more is better than too little. And then we've just got an area just at the uh, 
front there. This is where I caught the plastic with the blade when I was removing the uh, attachment point and it just left a little divot. So again, nothing to get worked up about or upset about. Just going onto the top of the airframe and the new cotton bud. We've just got some areas just in front of the uh, intakes there, or just behind the intakes. Which Just need a little bit of help. And again on the other side. Now if you remember we had a bit of an accident with the glue and it ran out the hole at the top of the fuselage there and ran onto some masking tape that we had in this area leaving a scar in the plastic well after sanding the area smooth there was a little divot still so I filled that with some uh, Mr Surfacer and we're just going to run that smooth as well And we'll do another check with that once primers on. So there we go, that's the fuselage and of the Starfighter now together. So we need to look at starting adding some of the other items to this, such as the tail, the ventral strake and things like that. And that is the only clean up that we've done to the model. So the fit of the fuselage in general is really that good, that uh, it's nothing more than just very, very slight remedial work we've got. A seam just here that we'll need dealing with it's just a little bit of a step but we can come back to that in the primer stages so with the fuselage prepared and the basic plastic um, up to scratch we can start building the other items into the airframe so the first thing we're going to look at is the tail plane and the rudder now these are all separate items so I've already removed part A9 and A10 and just cleaned up the seams. I've glued part A9 in place and this is just going to literally push fit on to the top of the tailplane. And we're just going to add some small amounts of liquid cement to hold it in place. Quick check with angles on the cutting mat, make sure everything's vertical and level. Which it is, and that's another job done. So we just need to add the rudder, which is part B21. So I'll just remove that from the spray. Clean the parts up. So we really just remove that to attachment point. Quick swipe with the uh, sanding stick just to make sure there is no raised area that's going to interfere with the fit, and that's ready to be added to the rear of the airframe. Like so. Again, we're just going to run some small amount of Tamiya liquid cement. Now you could, if you wish, just pose this slightly offset. But I think in this case, we'll just have it neutral. So that's the back end completed. So we have some of the stuff to go on the undersurface. Um, so we have a number of ventral strikes and uh, bits and pieces like that, but we're going to leave those for now. We've already assembled the intakes as we can be seen here. So turning the page, it looks like we're onto the undercarriage. And we're going to skip straight past that. And then we've got undercarriage door. We've got a photo etch plate that goes over the recess 
in the fuselage there. So we shall add that. And we've got uh, the ventral strake here, which is A18. So we shall locate that and remove that from the sprue. So making sure that those attachment points are removed and cleaned up as always. As I said it won't interfere with the fit of the parts. using a skinny skinny stick to get into that area so we do a test fit as always and we're just going to make sure that that fits in like that which it does and it's a lovely tight fit plus it has the benefit of hiding what little center seam there is and a bit of glue and just a touch to make it fit just turning it over and using the grid on the cutting mat just to make sure it's vertical which it is checking that fin again which it is so the wings of starfighter are very thin and very small and uh, kinetic offer some options that we need to be aware of so we've got flaps up or down aerolons and leading edge slats are all separate items and can be posed. We need to open up some holes in the wings should we want to be fitting any drop tanks or missile rails. So we'll use the, the flap down position. I think the wing just looks visually more pleasing. And we'll, we'll go through building these up. The question that we've got to ask is because of the colour scheme that we're using with the centre fuselage being painted in a different colour, whether the wings are going to be a good enough fit to actually leave those off and attach them once the uh, model's been painted. So we'll get on with building these wing sections up. We won't add the flight controls and we'll see what the fit to the fuselage like and that'll determine which, which uh, path we take. So moving on with the wings, we want parts A5 and A8. So we've just got a bit of a clean up here. Snip those off. Clean the end of that wing tip up. So there's a few ejector pin marks on the inside of the wing there, so it might be just a good idea to just give them a quick send, just in case any of them are proud. I'm going to remove these uh, sprue attachment points again from the wingtip on the other one, on the upper half. Just making sure they're nice and clean. There's nothing going to interfere with the fit. We're going. There's no pylon, so we're going to have the wings uh, clean on this model, with it being an aggressor. And as you can see, the fit of those parts is pretty good. There's just something happening at the wing tip, so that's those ejector pins. So we'll just sand those down. So it's just forcing the, the joint apart a little bit. Should be hidden with the uh, the wingtip tanks anyway. Let's have a look now. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and glue these with some quick drain Tamiya glue along the rear surface. Making 
making sure everything goes together. And then the moment of truth, let's see what this wing uh, joint's like. I'm sure it'll be nigh on perfect, which it is. So that wing joint is pretty good. Could be slightly better, a bit tighter maybe. And we've got a slight gap there at the leading edge. So I think um, we're we need to look at the two bobs instructions and see where the demarcation is for the center fuselage band of color and if it falls forward and aft of the flight controls then i will add the wings so we'll do the starboard side wing and we'll uh, add those to the model Like I said, in the, in the, when I was building the other halves of the wing up, and that we're keeping this wing clean. So there's no pylons to be fitted to this one, but they are supplied in the kit for a set of wing drop tanks. Under wing drop tanks as well as the wing tip ones. So as I fitted those on the, my previous uh, Luftwaffe boxing model, we shall have this a little bit different. Plus the uh, Japanese one looked to be... Uh, clean a little bit less work at the bench as well so as you can see from the instruction sheet there's quite a lot going on at the, in the wing so we have got the flaps uh, up and down and we just literally snip off the hinges that are not required but we're going to leave those for now until we've uh, decided on the best method of painting the model at the end of the construction process. As you can see from the next stage of the instruction booklet, should you be choosing not to uh, install the wingtip tanks, there is some photo etch and, and a wingtip light to be added there. So we'll stick these wings on and we'll see how we get on. So just grabbing the two bobs uh, sheet, so we're just going to check where this fuselage demarcation is for the coloured band. And it does fall aft of the, uh, the wing, so we should have a simple masking job, both on the red one and the, uh, the, the blue one. Still can't decide on which I'm favouring, I quite like the red, but the blue's equally as nice. So uh, a bit more masking with the with the red one. It's got the white fuselage coming across from the tops of the wings. Uh, still not made a decision as yet, but uh, I will do at one point. So we're going to attach these wings to the fuselage, so we can just deal with that slight little gap at the front. So making sure we've got them the right way round. And we're going to add these with a tiny bit of super glue to hold them in position. And then we're going to add some uh, liquid cement from underneath. So we're going to use a tiny bit of super glue to hold it in place. And then we're going to add the liquid glue from underneath to secure the joint. So there is a bit of wiggle room in this in this wing. So hopefully we can get them aligned. So just using a cheap pound shop super glue, nothing's None of these fancy ones, they all do the same job. So we're just going to move that in and out to get the joint secured. And hold it in place while the glue goes off. And there is a distinct canted down angle or with the starfighter, so we're just making sure that that is correct. And that the wing is now in place. So the trick with this one is to make sure the anhedral of the wing matches the other side. There again. Getting that, making sure. 
sure that glue goes off. And there we go. Now just lining this up on the cutting mat and using the grids. So we've got the tail nice and straight with one of the grid lines and those wings are perfect. So we'll go ahead and add the extra thin cement to the underneath. Just getting a good helping in there to work its way into the joint and secure it to the model. There we go. So when I built my uh, previous box in, the German one, I had the air brakes closed. I don't think they're designed to be closed on the model. Uh, a little bit of work was needed to get them in the closed position, but to make this one a little bit different, and um, when it's sat next to it on the display case, we're going to have the speed brakes open on this one. I'm also going to try and close the avionics panel behind the cockpit with the uh, canopy glass over the top. So, we, like we said, quickly approaching the primer stage. Uh, there's not much more I would really want to add to this now. Uh, perhaps save for that photo etch, uh, photo etch plate underneath. And uh, we'll see how we get on. We'll give it a coat of primer. I'll do that off camera. I um, certainly don't want to be hearing the compressor running. And we've still got some blood on that wing, so let's get rid of that. And there we go. So the wings are now on the Starfighter. And we're just going to go through the same process we did with the it's the surface here. and we're just going to tidy these wing seams up because there was a slight little gap at the uh, the front edge and then we can think about getting this in primer We're just working away at that wing joint. And then we'll do the other side. And then we'll start masking the cockpit. Ready to get it in primer. The model a wipe over with a wet wipe. Just knock the rudder off. And then we're just going to dry it with a bit piece of kitchen paper yep. let's glue this rudder back on And we'll think about masking this cockpit. So in order to get this in the kit in primer, we just need to mask this uh, cockpit aperture off. And we don't want any overspray in there um, damaging the work we've done. 
already. So we're just going to pull these masking tape strips quite tight over the opening. As we work our way around. We'll uh, probably do this one. And like that. And then over the top. That's all it needs. And we're just going to tidy that up now. So, uh, just change the knife blade. Is we're just going to by eye just gently follow the edge of the cockpit sill and then remove the masking tape from the fuselage sides like that and just make sure that's burnished out and in place and then we'll do the same with this side Follow it round. Oops, going to in a little bit too far there, probably. And we just peel it away. It'd probably be easier to move that comb in, actually. It just leaves the. Um, Arad look exposed. Seems like a slightly better way. Off pieces. To protect the instrument panel. So we can get this in primer now. So that's it for this episode of the Kinetic F-104 Starfighter. Uh, as you can see, the model sits there now on the cutting mat in primer. So it's ready for the final seam check, fingerprint check, and just to make sure that the general build quality is up to the standard required for some of the painting processes to begin. So overall, the fit of the model to this point has been really good. There's just a couple of seams there that need uh, some corrective work, but that's probably about par for the course with any kit. So thanks for following along with the build so far. Hope you've enjoyed the insight into what it takes to put the Kinetic F-104 Starfighter together. It's a really straightforward build with superior parts fit so if you like what you've uh, seen so far please subscribe there's plenty more to come so until next time please take care